Now, so the next topic today we are going to start is technology. So what is technology? Technology is something uh, with which you know uh, the human intervention into many of the tasks has got uh, like uh, like you know minimal ha has got minimized. So it is more uh, like the tasks are performed with the help of machines these days, right? That is what the advent of technology or the technology has done. So impact on organizations, what impact the technology has on organizations, right? That is what we are going to, going to discuss right now. Information systems, that means the information which passes from one channel to another through information technology, you know, like there will be, you know, if I have to send a mail to someone from India to US, there are, it can be done very easily through information technology, right? So like through uh, like uh, how like you know there will be uh, a computer here and a computer in US and uh, today in today's world the, the information is passing through optical fibers okay uh, through the sea uh, they have kind of made uh, they have laid optical fibers and uh, the technology is now uh, uh, transitioning so now we can see uh, that uh, through satellite the the, the the information can be passed like in the coming days we can see such technology so information systems and information technology have played a significant role in development of modern business environment of course in uh, previously the communication was manual everything was manual now everything is with the help of computer new structures through downsizing delaying outsourcing so now what has happened Delayering, so you know, like there are a lot of layers of management, top level management, mid level management, uh, low level management. So removal of layers of middle management. In middle management as well as deputy, assistant, a lot of managers, right? So they want to cut short of that. Managers or because you know, a lot of functionality is, is done through technology these days, through internet, uh, through, through the computers, right? So they don't want a lot of uh, like employees for doing certain tasks. So managers or staff lower down the hierarchy, lower down the order are empowered to make decisions previously made by middle managers. That means a lot of responsibility or autonomy has been given to the low level managers these days. That's called delayering. So they want to remove certain layers of management and to and they want to keep things short. That can also like, you know, a lot of factors are there for doing that, like reducing cost, etc. Downsizing, reducing the headcount in an organization by making redundancies. This can, this has driven by development such as automation. Yeah, now what is happening because of automation, thing, uh, everything happening uh, through system. What they are doing is they are they are like removing the employees. Okay, where routine tasks can be done through automation, and now AI, artificial intelligence is also coming. Right, a lot of things can be done through. AI enabled devices through robotic through robots. OK, where routine tasks that were once performed by laborers are now performed by robots outsourcing or else what they can do. They can outsource. Uh, they can like kind of uh, give the work to someone else to do on, on, on their behalf. Like, you know, a lot of work uh, low level, not I'm say, not saying the critical work whereby critical intelligence is required. Low level work whereby only some st stereotype kind of work whereby you know you don't require those skills you just require uh, you you just require some you just need to know some procedures and you can perform so such kind of works are outsourced india is a hub so the contacting out of specified operations or services to an external vendor so modern communication technology so they send all the data here and the, and and all the data related tasks which whereby uh, there is no skill required you know minimal skill is okay is performed in India. Modern communications technology makes decentralized organizations possible, not centralized. Uh, centralized is only one uh, someone who is heading the organization and he has a team of people and it's only good for small organizations whereby if I speak about decentralized organization like huge or very uh, like large organizations where they require this decentralization to happen whereby there's one manager who is heading, but greater autonomy is given to different different departmental managers. So that means a lot of departments would be seen in decentralized kind of organizations. 
allowing decision making to be passed down to empowered workers that means some power will be given to some workers or outsourced to external companies this has been assisted by improved management information system delaying has gone hand in hand with the trends towards downsizing whereby large number of managers and staff have been made redundant that means no work they have right now so they will be removed right there has been a trend in recent years from business for businesses to outsource peripheral activities to specialist organizations enabling the business to focus on its own core activities that means yeah some critical uh, information or critical kind of tasks or core tasks uh, will be performed in the, uh, in the in the in the headquarters itself but like you know like certain tasks whereby high skills are not required routine tasks whereby they can save a lot of cost they outsource it right so activities that are commonly outsourced include but are not limited to it services see it services is you know like a lot of work today is outsourced in the field of it but other other uh, like kind of businesses even are there whereby they also outsource a lot of tasks right then finalizing arrangements for outsourcing it the following factors need to be considered is the system of strategic importance yes tend towards keeping it in house if things are very very important for you then you keep it in house otherwise you can outsource can the system be relatively isolated yes tend towards outsourcing if it is possible to isolate work that means you can do your work and you can just give it to others then you can do do we understand the systems enough to manage the service agreement that means that is uh, for the vendors like to whom you are outsourcing if they understand the things properly and the job then you can outsource impact on accountants since we are doing acca it's like the body is very much uh, like you know uh, into accountancy so the following technological advances are also in having impact on the role of accountant yes a lot of routine job has been taken by the auto, like uh, by the by the auto, like uh, ai enabled tools or because of automation a lot of people are losing their jobs so routine processing so technological impact uh, technological advances have an impact on this particular areas routine processing routine task can be done through automation very easily digital information and record keeping is done through systems new skills required and new ways of working that is again a challenge for the accountant because now they want they should have good knowledge of computers reliance on it yes lot of dependency on it has increased new methods of communication and of providing customer service the view of information as a valuable resource information is very important in today's world right the view of information as a commodity so discuss how do you, how you think technology will change the role of accounting this is a this is a homework for you this is such an activity whereby i don't think my uh, intervention is required because you are studying an accounting course whereby you may be in a very good uh, maybe in a very good position to answer this the question uh, like do you uh, discuss how you think technology will change the role of accountant so how the technology can change the role of accountant some points hello yes tanya yes sir can you just first earlier uh there are many impacts and yes. going to change the role of the content very much yeah because, because uh, yeah some, they are some, relying some, more on uh, ai and all you know the technology modern technology they are relying on that more okay so i can like i can put some points on the screen if you can say yes sir sure yeah tell me point number 1 anything what whatever you know like uh, what you can say uh, many points are there right so bookkeeping now is been done electronically right bookkeeping is a routine task which can be done through like uh, you know that can be done through ai enabled tools or automation lot of like sales related bills or invoices or whatever in the in the in the outlets now are done by electronic uh, are done electronically right rest anything
yes so routine tasks through automation yeah i think this two or three points okay now then comes the environmental factor see environment is equally very important right environment is something which surrounds us so we want see wherever we stay wherever we live we want a very good environment right we always search for natural environment whereby we get we have good tree good amount of trees fresh air we have good uh, clean uh, water bodies etc because that is the hygiene what we what we always desire for right so the companies which are you know doing businesses no one is against their profits companies should earn profits but not at, not at the expense of not at the expense of exploitation of the environmental resources okay and uh, ex over exploitation of that that means you know for their profits they are they are doing lot of uh, exploitation of the environment they are cutting trees they are doing illegal mining that means beyond a prescribed limit they are kind of doing the mining that is depleting lot of uh, that is that is depletion of lot of minerals from the earth surface whereby the ecological balance can be disturbed so natural environment there is increasing concern so lot of people now want to invest in companies which also give lot of importance to environmental factors these days you know that uh, if companies are if companies care about environmental factors that is also creating a reputation of those companies amongst the investors so today's world some some company doing good for the environment and using clean and green technology which is considering esg factors uh, environmental social and governmental factors that means complying with all the rules and regulations are the ones which are considered very safe right there is increasing concern about businesses relationship with natural environment businesses may suffer significant costs and a loss of reputation if problems arise if they don't if they are very big polluters so you know they can be punished or penalized with lot of fines okay so much business activity takes place at some cost of environment examples of impacts on environmental include depletion of natural resources noise and aesthetic impacts uh, air pollution you know water pollution you know uh, long term waste disposal and condensed health effects change in the local quality of life they give employment we don't say they don't give employment but these are all the factors also which are very important to be considered they spoil environment as well uh, environment as well limiting damage to environment suggest actions that a manufacturing company could take that would reduce the damage it causes to environment so what can you say what the company should do so that they uh, they can minimize the like damage to the environment see we can say that they can uh, recycle right recycling so whatever the water pollution is happening they can re they can uh, build some stp sewerage treatment plants which can treat the water water treatment or recycling right treatment of water purifying the air with filters devices or through plantation right next they can use clean technology clean and green technologies next using more so for packaging and all using more user friendly products using more i'll say environmental friendly products that means you which can be re recycled like uh, do, not using plastics using something which can be you know recycled easily okay so all these things next then comes the sustainability what is sustainability see i already have explained you about sustainability in the in the previous session i told sustainability is nothing but not exploiting the resources in entirety and uh, that means not only thinking that whatever we have we can exploit and make money also look uh, thinking about the society the resources belong to everyone all other stakeholders and and also living the things for the future generation to 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 kind of experience it right 
so sustainability meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs so suppose if you want to use something you use it but don't use it in such a way that the future generation cannot use it that means they may not have the resources to use environmental sustainability ability of organizations to operate without harming the environment irreversibly that means if you uh, if you kind of uh you know harm the environment very badly then it becomes irreversible that means the thing now uh, once you have done lot of damage then the re it cannot reverse back right so it will be spoiling so social sustainability the ability of organizations to have a positive impact on society for example by creating employment and treating employees and other stakeholders fairly economic sustainability the ability of organization to provide return to shareholders over the long term so sustainability is not only in one area but in all the areas right so everywhere sustainability is required businesses are businesses are re recognizing that in order to be economically sustainable they need to consider not only short term financial performance but also uh, but the wider see it's not like you only look for short term profits you should have wider impact that have on the society you should create such an impact and on the environment the three types of sustainability are therefore interlinked many organizations pu publish sustainability reports which aim to show their impact on society rather than just financial returns to shareholders so today's world people have changed you know people's mindset have changed now people are not only looking at profits but they are looking also at uh, also they are looking the things broadly they want uh, apart from profit they want some good uh, reviews about the company related to environment or social sustainability okay so typically reports into the following the impact of organization has on the environment so all these reports like whether they are less polluters use of scarce resources such as raw metal and energy and the use and development of intangible resources such as human capital so they should not exploit all these things right and relationship with employees and the other key stakeholders in short operating in a sustainable and environment friendly in uh, friendly fashion may increase the cost of a business yes we understand everything is very costly if you uh, want to make uh, maintain everything very clean sustainable environment friendly then you have to spend lot of money for that in short term it may incur cost for you but in long term you may get very good benefits out of it right that may increase your uh, like reputation in the market real life example oil giant british petroleum states in its sustainability report our ambition is to become a not, our ambition is to become a net zero company by 2050 or sooner and help the world get to net zero Go back, sir. just a second next activity can you do this activity alia what are the benefits to each of the following stakeholders of a business aiming to achieve economic sustainability can you answer this hello hello yes sir yeah so related to economic sustainability see if the business is sustainable in which there are the in which the investors invest so uh, like uh, they can enjoy return on investment for long term right employees like you know employees want good uh, progression in their career so what happens in, in a good company they may feel more secured right customers would always be loyal to companies which are giving which are you know into clean and green products uh, like environment friendly products and uh, that is related to the environmental and social but we are speaking about economic sustainability so here career progression and hike salary hikes perks customers always want you know reliable supply of goods at, at cheaper rates right suppliers always want the demand for their goods in the market local community want you know want to benefit from successful businesses because they get taxes right next comes the swot analysis this swot analysis is nothing but strength weakness opportunity threat so what we understand see 
whatever strength you have, you should try to improve on that more, right? You should try to improve it more. You should overcome your weakness. You should always grab the opportunity what comes to you and whatever threats you have, you should try to minimize that. OK, that is what analysis. So now we'll come to this. Strength, weakness, opportunity, threats. So internal to company exist independently of the company. OK, so what do you want? You want to convert your weakness to strength, right? Right. You should match the opportunities, right? And threats also you should convert to opportunities, right? Now. So these are the ones which are internal to company strength and weakness exist independently. That means this and this, you know, this is not internal to company. Opportunities come from outside and threats also come from outside. Sometimes internal threats may also be there, but outside it is. So we always look at different threats which the organization is exposed to. So strength and weakness, the internal appraisal will identify the areas of organization that have strengths that should be exploited by suitable strategies. That means whatever the strength you have, you should utilize your strength with uh, like uh, by making you know good strategies and the weaknesses you should overcome. I already explained you opportunities you should grab, exploit and threats you should try to minimize, right? So external appraisal identifies opportunities that can be exploited by the organization's strengths and anticipates environmental threats against which the company must protect itself. Opportunity. What opportunity exists in the business environment? You should ask a question to yourself. Then what is the inherent profit making potential? You should see like how you can make profits. Can the organization exploit the worthwhile opportunities? What is the comparative capability profile of competitors? What is the company's comparative performance potential in this field of opportunity? So how like you know what is the company's comparative performance potential in this field of opportunity? That means whatever the opportunity they are getting uh, company. Uh, how come company can perform? What is its potential? Right? Whether it can grab the opportunity or take the opportunity threats. What threats might arise to company? or its business environment, how will competitors be affected? How will the company be affected because of those threats? These are all questions the company should be asking to itself and they should develop some strategies to grab this and reduce this. Using a SWOT analysis, the SWOT analysis can be used in one of two ways. The organization can develop resource based strategies which enable the organization to extend the use of its strength. For example, a supermarket chain extends its range of own branded goods from food to other areas. That's what see you can take the advantage of your own strength, right? So you can make your own resource. See already you have a resource. You already you are already established one. So now you can make your own products and sell in your own supermarket chain that will again create one more business opportunity, right? Business can develop positioning based strategies. In other words, identifying what opportunities are available and what firm has to do to exploit them. So where in what is your position and what you can do, how you can make money? You should see that, right? We are into the last topic uh, right now and we are going to wind up this chapter. Converting resources, the value chain. So how resources are converted uh, through a value chain? We'll see Michael Porter in 1985 says that competitive advantage is, achi is achieved by the way a firm organizes and performs activities to add value. Yeah, you, you know what happens? See, you can you have a very good advantage, a competitive advantage or you can achieve it. How you can achieve it? If you organize yourself and perform activities which can add value to your which can add value to yourself, right? You should first organize yourself point number one and then you should perform activities in such a way that it can add value to you. Or to your product. Creating value organizations create value when they do something that customers are willing to pay for. Take a restaurant for example. Buying see every restaurant buys, but from where you buy what kind of quality product you buy, etc. Then cooking. What is your methodology of cooking and the serving how you serve? So that that these all activities can, is performed by many restaurants, but 
every restaurant has a different mechanism or way of doing that and every restaurant charges in a different way right to their customers some are very premium some are not premium so premium in the sense they use the best product and and the customers also go to those those hotels or restaurants because they want premium kind of uh, stuff right so a restaurant's activities can be divided into buying food cooking it and serving it there is no reason why customers cannot do all these things themselves at home yes every person you know in the world human beings can do any task right in the restaurants even humans are performing these tasks in our homes as well our parents buy goods buy uh, like you know provisions Ma our mom cooks our mother cooks right and she does the serving part right and we in fact we can also buy cook and serve however then why we go to restaurants what is the need however customers are happy to pay the restaurant more than the cost of the resources see we know if we make a recipe at home it's going to cost us 10 rupees let's say but in restaurant we are paying 100 rupees for that what is the reason let's see the ultimate because the restaurant has created value in such a way that you are paying 100 rupees how the ultimate value a firm creates is measured by the amount customers are willing to pay for its product or services above the cost of carrying out value activities a restaurant's activities can be divided into buying food cooking it and serving it there is no reason why customers cannot do all these things themselves at home however customers are happy to pay the restaurant more than the cost of the resources the ultimate value a firm creates is measured by the amount customers are willing to pay for its products or services above the cost of carrying out value activities so you know like it may cost 20 but you're paying 100 but why because ambience because of uh, why why are why are you paying that because the the restaurant has all those factors which creates value to that product how they have a very good infra structure that means a very good ambience they have a human resource management which takes care of all which, which is behind the services what the uh, hotel is giving to you from billing to serving to etc then they have very good technology they are using right they bring a laptop or something and take orders and uh, the, uh, and and the procurement okay and then uh, they have this uh, other uh, support activities like you know things are very properly uh, like uh, happening in the company okay uh, like inbound logistics or operations uh, outbound logistics see what is logistics it is like from procuring the raw material to storage to uh, like uh, making sure that it reaches the end customer so it has it will happen inbound it will have outbound today you know a lot of deliveries are happening or good operations marketing and sales someone is marketing the product and services okay so what is happening as per the uh, why, uh, the value is, value is getting created because of all this so this is value chain network we can see so Porter's value chain 1985 group and organizations various activities into a value chain. So this is a value chain. These are the primary activities. That means buying the goods or raw material to making it sure that it is stored well to uh, making sure that it is used by the uh, company and then again it reaches the end customer. Okay. That uh, so in uh, internally if these all are happening like raw material you are buying and storing in your companies go down okay and then making sure the materials are moving from one department to another department for processing purpose excuse me
Hello? Yeah. Now, so this is what is happening. So uh, like primary activities are this maintaining good, uh, like maintaining that logistics uh, uh, like very perfectly and then all the operations should be performed perfectly and outbound logistics should be seen. Marketing and sales should be like intact and all the services should be intact. These primary activities are supported by these activities. Like for all this, you should have a good infrastructure, human resource management, technological development and also procurement, right? then what happens when the when the value is got when the value has got created you can kind of add the margin right so margin is added and again the goods are sold in the market so margin is the excess the customer is prepared to pay over the cost to the firm of obtaining resource inputs and providing value activities so let's say if it is 10 rupees still the value net value chain what you are seeing value this thing okay then apart above from above to that two if i add margin then the complete value a complete value for the product is created right so the, the people are need to pay extra for this now margin is the excess so this is what the people are ready to pay right this margin is what people are ready to pay additional extra above the cost so it represents the value created by the value activities see because if the value activities are not performed then why will people pay they all the see when we go to a hotel restaurant we always know if they are charging some money they are charging very premium for a kg sweet or whatever for one kg sweet or for any recipe why they are charging uh, a higher amount because we know all the cost they have incurred and they have gone through all this value chain uh, like uh, network right so they also have all this and they also they have a primary activity support activities and because of that the value has got created and they are adding margin and selling to us we are ready to pay the high amount so it represents the value created by the value activities themselves and by the management of linkages between them yeah so all the activities are interlinked and are properly managed so primary activities are directly related to production sales marketing delivery and service Inbound logistics, you know, like receiving the material, handling, storing, inputs to production system, warehousing, transport, inventory control, etc. Operations, converting input into output. Outbound logistics is nothing but selling the goods to the end customers, packaging, testing, delivery, and so on. So everywhere, you know, they spend money. Marketing and sales, information, informing customers about product and creating awareness and service, like giving any kind of service to the customers, post-sale service, like warranty, etc. And then here comes the purchasing, procurement, technology development using the high-tech technology and then recruiting, training, skill development, rewarding people, HR and firm infrastructure. So linkages is nothing but all these activities are linked, you know, like linkages are there. That's the reason why that's coordination. All these activities require coordination. And then there are lot of value networks here whereby you see all the all the like value chains. OK. Uh, intertwined here or you can see a chain all all chain here this is suppliers chain okay so suppose there is there is a supplier x i'm speaking about supplier x so supplier x has an organization whereby he has or he or she or they there are some group of suppliers let's say they have their own value chain network so again the value gets created for their product what they want to sell again that comes to the organization right they supply the raw material so they, they are the the value is getting created for those raw materials then raw material which is output for the suppliers is input for organization and they they also have this value chain network whereby they convert this and the value is created for that product again it goes to distributor and again from distributor to it goes to customers okay then there are five uh, so what is the answer for this draw two value chain diagrams in each so you should do this activity Competitive forces, there are five competitive forces of Potter, which Potter has said. So the five uh, competitive forces are potential entrants, the one who want to enter into the market, threat of new entrants, if you want to enter into the market, 
bargaining power of customers bargaining power of suppliers substitute close substitutes of our products and rivalry among existing firms these are all the five uh, forces of porter which every organization like uh, you know faces right they face the threat of new entrants they face the bargaining power of customers suppliers substitutes and rivalry so keeping all this into consideration they should perform their business activities right so done with this chapter we will start the next chapter tomorrow the next chapter is the legal framework we are done with two the third one will be done tomorrow okay thank you so much